Hello and thank you for joining me here in Uganda today for some thoughts from the Bible. Now, I, I love a lot of the characters that we meet as we read through the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. There are some, some very interesting people that God chooses to use to further his plans in the world throughout the books of the Old Testament. It's great evidence, I always think, that God can use anyone regardless of what they've done, where they've been. Ah, it's, it's wonderful. And I've, I've just been reading the start of Exodus where we meet a man called Moses who is in fact a murderer and yet God's chosen person to rescue his people Israel. We meet him and his brother Aaron and it's a, a great story to read. But this time as I read through it, my attention was drawn to a whole load of characters who actually aren't really mentioned in the Bible at all. It started when I read this verse in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 40. Now the length of time the Israelite people lived in Egypt was 430 years. There is a little bit of dispute amongst Bible scholars as to whether that time, that 430 years, was all in Egypt or if it included some of the time that Abraham and Isaac and co were wandering through the land of Canaan. But, but either way, we're talking about a good number of years between Joseph and his brothers living in Egypt, a, a well-respected group treated pretty well by the Egyptians, and the time when Moses was there, when the Israelites were living in slavery. So for a good percentage of the time, however long it was, the Israelite people were completely and utterly enslaved. What suddenly dawned on me as I read that little sentence is that some of those Israelite people would have been born, would have lived their entire lives and would have died in slavery. They would never have known freedom at all. It's possible that whole generations, in fact, lived every single day of their lives enslaved. They never experienced a single day of freedom. And yet, when Moses and Aaron appear to the people, this is what we read that happens in Exodus chapter 4, verses 29 to 31. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites and Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. I find that a, an incredible response for these elders of the people of Israel to have. See, this is before the Bible. This is before the law, even. This is way, way, way before Jesus and before his, um, his death and resurrection and ascension and sending the Holy Spirit to inhabit believers. These people didn't have any written record. They didn't have that that real feeling of, of Christ with them. There were, as far as we know, in fact, in this period, there weren't any prophets or representatives of God speaking to the people. There weren't even the, the priests and the Levites yet to, uh, to guide the people in their worship. That all came later with Moses. And yet, despite not having any of that, despite the hardship that these people had endured for entire lifetimes, they remembered God. At Moses' and Aaron's words, they believed in him and they bowed down in worship to the God of their ancestors. Now, I feel that that response, that reaction to hearing this truth would only have been the case if all the years through their slavery, through their pain and their suffering and their hardship, they were still taking the time to teach the next generation what they knew about God, about the, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God who had called them out as his chosen people and who had promised one day, 
to rescue them. But wouldn't it have been so, so easy to give up? Remember, we are talking about people who've lived every single day of their lives beneath a brutal regime. It might have been easier to think, you know, maybe we should just worship the gods of the Egyptians, right? I mean, after all, they, they seem to be prospering pretty well. It would have been so easy for maybe for the younger generations, those who were further removed from the stories of God, it would have been so easy for them to turn their backs on him, to say, well, yeah, maybe, maybe back then there was a God who, who you know, was with our ancestors, but he's clearly not here now, is he? And yet they didn't. Now, we don't know the details of this time. We don't know the ins and outs of, of what people's lives looked like, but we don't, we don't know the names of the many, many thousands of people who faithfully continued to pass on that knowledge of God. But I just love the thought that throughout that whole time, there were, were so many individual decisions made, just small little steps on a daily basis to remain faithful. What a challenge that is in this world today where everything is so immediate. You know, if we don't see God answer a prayer in five minutes, then, then we just assume it's never going to happen, right? Because it wasn't immediate. It wasn't right there. When we face hard times, we, we feel abandoned. We feel hard done to. We feel, why, why would this happen to us? This isn't fair. That's kind of our immediate go-to. And yet this people, they endured conditions beyond what we can even imagine for decades, possibly for centuries, and they continued to believe. Their instant reaction to hearing fresh news from God was to worship him. Wow. When we find ourselves in a difficult place that seems to have no end in sight, dare I say coronavirus, we need to stay faithful. We need to continue talking about God and all he has done and we need to continue praising him. You know, I can imagine one of those Israelite elders kind of remembering a time when he was younger, sitting at the feet of his, his grandfather who, who told him of this man, Joseph, and God's promise to him that the people of Israel would be rescued. How amazing it would have been for him in that moment to, to think, wow, I'm going to see the reality of that promise that was given so, so long ago. And, you know, it wasn't even, it wasn't easy. Even after Moses and Aaron arrived, there was still even more hardship for the people of Israel to go through. And yet something in them, I'm sure, must have felt excited at the prospect of what God could do at this time that God might step in to fulfill his promise. They held on to hope, even in a situation that seemed hopeless. And we can do the same. Don't give up hope. Don't stop believing because God is at work. No matter what you can see right now, no matter what you may be feeling right now, God is at work. And what he has promised he will not fail to fulfill. So hang on to the promises that he has spoken into your life. He is going to bring those things to pass. It may be that you are right on the cusp of your rescue. It may be that you're not. And there is still some time to go and you need to just hang on in faithfulness. But you can put your trust in God each and every single day with little acts of faithfulness knowing that he has not forgotten you and he has not forgotten the promises that he has spoken into your life. Thank you so much for joining me today for some thoughts from the Bible. I'll be back on Friday. I'm here every Friday, every Monday with, with these videos. So I will see you then.